In this episode of The Dr. E Show, we explore fascinating topics at the frontiers of human possibilities, including something called breatharianism. It's this idea that some humans, such as certain yogis or qigong masters, may be able to attain such high energy states that they live on little or no physical food. Full disclaimer, this episode is not here to suggest anybody stop eating. Please do not engage in prolonged fasting without careful preparation, safety precautions, and professional supervision. This show in our community is all about making smart, healthy choices, taking personal responsibility, and creating well-being on all levels. So please, always, safety first. We are in a time of bombardment of energy, and we've gone from the, the, the journey is me, 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 it's all about me, to a flipping consciousness, to we, 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 we. And when we're aware of our impact on the greater whole, we get grace because now we're operating in the game of the we. But now we're in the me, we game. And the me, we game is you need time out to nurture you to be immersed in the new frequencies that are coming in and fully integrate that. And then you can go back and be more active again where the being does the doing rather than the mind does the doing because you are immersed more deeply in the pure nature that you are and the, the energy coming in now is very much of the divine feminine call of the heart, intuitive call and not the busyness of mental wisdom understanding and trying to understand everything. Because the time we're in now is the more we try to understand the changes in the world on a mental level, the more confusing it gets. And we know this. We've all been told it's a time of the heart. It's a time of just stillness, being still, being silent, listen to the voice of the heart, follow the call of the heart. So we need now to have the balance of the me we gain. Hello. This is Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan. Welcome to The Dr. E Show, a show exploring the frontiers of our human possibilities in areas like health and wellness, science and spirituality, quantum biology, and conscious living, so that together we can awaken the best of ourselves and create our most joyful and fulfilling lives. Welcome to part two of our fascinating conversation with Jazz Muheen. If you haven't already, we recommend listening to part one first so that you can get the most out of this powerful conversation. Now, without further ado, please enjoy. You try and do from human personality, oh my God, you can get exhausted. But when you can just come back to pure beingness and let the beingness do, Without your conscious interference on any level, it's all magnetic and everything you need comes to you before you even know you need it. Franz Kafka said, you can get to a state of being where the universe literally rolls in ecstasy at your feet. And when I heard that, I went, oh yeah, that's what I want. I would love to be in that state. But my mind, my scientific mind said, but how, why? And then the answer was because what you are vibrating is so beneficial to creation that creation loves you so totally, that creation serves you so completely that nothing is an effort at all. Now, that's a good way to be on earth, but it comes back to surrender. It comes back to knowing the magnificence of the human design and what we are built to achieve. What is dark matter? What is that 99.9% .9 space in each atom? Well, it's not space. It's pure consciousness. It's the very baseline of creation. It's unexpressed potential. What is the unified field? It's unexpressed potential, just waiting our focus upon it so it can spring to life. But if we don't believe something's possible, then the door shuts. Mm -hmm. You know, if we say, oh no, a human being has to be fed by physical food, then great, live in that realm. That's fine. If we can say, well, maybe now that we've heard there's about 80,000 people or more on planet Earth who are living this truth and have this freedom, maybe 
it's part of me. Well, of course it is, because all the ancient wisdoms say there is this energy that's everywhere, all knowing, all loving in everything and in us. So if it is there, all we need to say is, how can we make it stronger? What happens when it dominates? What happens when that part of us dominates rather than the human personality construct? When that part of us becomes stronger, watch what happens. Well, it loves, it advises, it gives us this intuitive understanding, it heals, and yes, it can also take away all our hunger, you know? And I love exploring that. I have a question, which is that I feel like since I experienced Dark Room with you in 2013, I'm still unpacking and integrating and kind of um, receiving guidance from all that opened up from that experience. It's not always easy. And what you said is so true. You are in a deep, whether it's your Dark Room or any other profoundly transformational experience with a group of very high vibrational like-minded beings, like-hearted beings, that you experience such a blissful, beautiful, loving state, and then you feel that drop happens when you yeah. come back to your life. In harmonizing with society and with our friends and family, how do you know what is the dosage <laughs> that is right? Because there are those moments where you feel like, yeah, I'm still tapped in, I'm still radiating that frequency, even when I'm with difficult challenging situations with my community with my family and then there are those moments where you're worn out by it yeah. and you you don't feel like you're that, you know, just, sometimes i feel like i'm not that enlightened yet to hold that yeah. pure solidly loving vibration in this this stressful situation and i lose my shit <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so there's like a fine line because then if I'm always surrounded in nature, my hunger very quickly goes down. When I meditate lots, my hunger goes away. Like, you know, all this, it, it, it's like a ebb and flow in reality that I experience. There's always this push and pull of wanting to escape into nature and meditate all the time because I feel so comfortable there. And then also wanting to be like you, inspired by you. You are so active in the world. You are so consistently bringing forth beautiful change in the world and traveling to polluted cities, crowded places, seeing hunger, slums, war, the not so pretty aspects of humanity on planet Earth these days. Yeah. How does that not bring you down sometimes? You know, one, I learned very on in the Being Nourished by Prana that I couldn't play the absorption game. If I walk through this world and I'm an open channel, I can feel this sorrow, I can feel this sadness. Like I'm dealing with a young girl at the moment and she's on a very refined diet and she's a sensitive, she's an empath. But she's not really spent a lot of time meditating or honing into those gifts she has. And right now we are at a stage of evolution where there's massive changes through this awakening of people to their true nature. And we're drawing energy because of our prayers to understand more about unity consciousness and, and live as one people in harmony on one planet. We've been in this prayer state for a long time, different generations, the baby boomers, we did it all in the 60s and the 70s. And then we had the harmonic convergence in 87. And then we had the choices made at the end of 2012. And so we all came into this, come on, surely there's a more enlightened way to be together on planet Earth. And these prayers went out. And so we're getting these pulsations back from the galactic core and from the universal core and from the unified realms, as well as the energy coming up from Gaia herself as she's transcending and ascending and she's transmitting harmony and she's transmitting compassion because she's like, I'm on a journey, you want to go with me, wake up to the truth of who you really are, tread lightly upon me and treat me with love, you know, reduce your carbon footprint, for example. So we are being slammed by these energies and from the highly active sacred vortices in the world that are transmissioning from Tibet and 
and um, the Amazons and the cultures there and Egypt and all around the world and Mount Shasta and Santa Fe and Sedona and many incredible places are really vibrating at high frequencies and the millions of people waking up and really harmonizing with that and in coming into unity with pure nature. So everyone's in these ah, states where this transmission is drawing up old patterns within us that sometimes make us feel like, whoa, or we feel waves of sadness like this young woman. She can just feel so much and she was saying, what is wrong with me? And that's the first thing to delete delete it there's nothing wrong with you you're just a sensitive now you've got to learn how to deal with energies well so stop the game of absorption and start the game of radiation so for me i had to go into this attitude here of i am plugged in to a never-ending source of love and wisdom and power that is part of my body of light it is my pure nature and it radiates through me everything I need all the time. It feeds me from the inside out. And as it radiates through me, it nourishes everything around me that's open to be nourished by this vibration. I radiate, I radiate, I radiate. And when that radiation dominates, you can be anywhere in any situation because you're also seeing every external situation with a higher perception and you can deal with it with love and compassion. And sometimes the only thing to do in a negative situation where someone's really suffering is to just zip it, be it, and give them a hug. That's it. Because there's nothing you can say is going to reach them or change their, their um, situation. You can share methodology. You can share the things we share at the Embassy of Peace that do enhance people's lives. But sometimes it's just a hug. And I know as I've been working like deep in China at the moment, I can be there in a big crowd and women will just come up and throw their arms around me and hug me and hug me and hug me. And I just feel as if the divine feminine is fully in my system and hugging and hugging and hugging and hugging them. And they cry and they cry and they cry and they cry and they release and they release and they release. And I just hold them and hug them as if Mother Mary is in me hugging them. And that's so beautiful for me. And when they finish crying, they're done. And they're like, oh, I feel better now. And they go away. <laughs> it's like... That's beautiful. And we can all hug. We can all just step back into this pure goddess we are, these priestesses we are. And we can just ask that part of ourselves that is so loving and so non judgmental and so able to love unconditionally to just be there and just. We surrender to it and we just hold and hug. And these people cry and cry and cry and release and they're done with that. And it's dissolved because that's the power of pure love. You know, yeah, it's simple, but it works, you know. And when this love just radiates through and you feel that this pure essence love that is in us all, when it is radiating strong and it's moving in the bodies of the person you're holding and where it's working with the law of love. And the law of love says there is this energy that has the power when it's released to transmute everything back into its original pure state. And you feel that's what's happening. And they're getting this blast of chi, this bigu transmission, this pranic transmission, and you're just hugging and they're being healed. We can all do that. We can all do that. But how strong is the transmission? Well, it depends on how deeply you are merged with your own pure nature. If you're not merged very deeply with it, if your dominant reality, if your dominant energy is your personality self, well, you need physical food or you'll die. You're not going to have that level of transmissioning power to hug and heal. And you're a healer and many healers know this. What do you do? You just step out of the way and you just invite this universal energy of the purest love to flow through you 
and the person that you're working with will drink of that love and drink of that love and drink of their love and their body will take whatever it is they need until they're done and they've had enough for that session. Mm -hmm. And you, if it, you're just in the flow and surrendered, you get energized. You don't get tired. Right. You get tired if you're coming from monkey mind. Right. You're trying to heal from personality self. It's like, uh, you know, if you're in personality self and someone comes for a hug, you're like, oh, I don't like their energy. Don't touch me. You'll pollute me, <laughs> which some people are like, you know, it's interesting. or you can just be in another state. Sorry. As you're speaking, I'm feeling the, the feminine aspect of myself just feel that awe opening mm. in my heart. I feel the awe. And then there's the logical analytical mind of me is saying, you know what? This is highly efficient and productive. <laughs> you know? it is. Very like, yeah, you know, I have an applied math and engineering background before Chinese medicine, and I was always looking for optimization and, and math yeah. calculations of what is the most efficient way to run the engineering system. And this is yeah. so extraordinarily yeah. efficient way to run your life. So it's even though it feels very soft and feminine, it's also satisfying. Powerful. Yes. What is the most powerful energy in creation? It's the energy that brought creation into being. So when we drop into that energy pool, then everything can shift, you know? And I'm like, I'm like you, I'm an energy field scientist. I want to tap into the most nourishing frequency that is available to a human system while still retaining physical form because I love to be on planet Earth and I don't want to go anywhere. I want to hold this body, but I want to be strong and fit and healthy for as long as I want to be here. And I want super fuel and prana is super fuel. There's no additives, there's no preservatives, there's no Monsanto interference, there's no genetic modification. And when you go to source feeding, you are fed in such a way that you don't need much sleep, you know, so you might have... I might go to bed and sleep for 10 minutes and my body wakes up and goes, da-da! And I'm like, really? I just put you to sleep. And it's like, yeah, I don't need any more. And then I'll read for a few hours or I'll meditate for a few hours or I'll get up and then maybe I'll have three or four cat naps a night because you don't need what a normal system that's not fed in this way needs. Mm -hmm. And if you take heavy fuel sources, like if you're eating a lot of meat and you're eating a lot of junk food and you're, you're taking things that drop your energy, then you need a lot of sleep. Your body operates differently. So I want the best fuel. I want the best, most powerful powerful energy that can really make my system operate at its highest maximum potential and the joy is the discovery that we all have it within it's just part of us it's either weak or strong make it strong and be free so many of Simple. us listening to the show have heard this term breatharianism this idea yeah. that some beings can live in a certain state where they don't need physical food, which is what you're talking about. You're experiencing mm. it for decades now. Yeah. You really stabilize. And some people even call you the grandmother of Western breatharianism because we read about it in Autobiography of a Yogi. We've heard legends of Qigong masters and very advanced yogis tapping into the state. And then here's a beautiful modern Western woman with blonde hair and makeup and cute jewelry living this yogic way, but in a modern Western way. And we almost can't handle it, you know? It's, like, it's I know that she doesn't look like a yogi from the mountains. Yeah. You know, she's, she's got a computer. She lives in a modern home. Tell us about your journey of exploring breatharianism and why you no longer like that term breatharianism. Well, I think it came from Wiley Brooks in the 1970s and it means a breather of God. And Wiley was very instrumental in introducing it to the West in the 1970s. And I've met with him a few times, but he's now left his body. He was a very interesting person and really pushed people's buttons. And I guess I was the second wave that came into the West to push people's buttons. While he did it in the 70s, we got pushed onto the global stage in Europe particularly in the early 1990s once I had got locked into the experience. But I wasn't looking for this. I was only interested in ascension. 
I was only interested in being the best version that, of myself that I could be, of the real me, you know. And when this gift was given as a byproduct of that journey, it was a shock to me because I'd heard about Giri Bala, but at no point in reading that book did I go, oh, I'd like that. In fact, it was like, oh, not for me. <laughs> You know, I liked being on a raw, raw diet. I was mainly raw before this and pretty well vegan. And I did probably a 70% raw, a little bit of steamed vegetables. And I was very aware right through my childhood and teenage years about fuel. And I was very athletic. So I realized that I was much better at all the athletic pursuits I had if I had a light diet. I'd already experienced my mental clarity was much better for all my studies because I was doing maths and, you know, went to uni and did um, computer science, all of that sort of stuff. And I'd already discovered that a light diet was better for my system, my clarity and my energy, etc. But I was never interested in this reality. And so when it happened to me, it was like a shock to me as well and then when I got the push which is another story again to be on the global stage and share this with others I thought oh my god I can't do this who am I I'm just a simple woman I can't sit there on stage and read the Bhagavad Gita from my mind and I can't read the Bible and I'm no yogi with wisdom and if I was meant to do this then surely I would have come as an Indian yogi and I could have said oh yes there is this energy and it is so magnificent and it is inside of you and when you release it you are free but I wasn't I was just a simple person mom now grandma you know being married a long time normal sort of person to a degree and um, it was a shock for me it took a while and also to find how people reacted because they wanted me to be like this Indian guru or or Qigong master from China and have a different look but I know that also creates separation mm -hmm. and why this was chosen, this vehicle and this format was just to say, look, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I'm just a simple person. All it is is changing channel. All it is is living life differently. All it is is vibration and keynote and matching frequency and lifestyle. Because how we spend our time determines our vibration, which determines how quantum intelligence responds to us how the unified field responds to us and which zone of reality we are anchored into. So there is a scientific formula and it's about keynote and matching frequency and vibration. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't understand. I had no idea. I just had gone through the spiritual initiation and this was a byproduct and I was still trying to understand it. Because you can't say to the scientific community, Oh, yeah, it's just about love. It's all about love. Go back to baseline. It's all about love. It is. <laughs> but that, that doesn't wash with a, a good, meaty exploration. But you can say it's all about frequency and it's all about mind mastery and it's all about how you're feeding yourself mentally because we can feed ourselves mentally with so many limited paradigms that perpetuate so much separation or we can feed ourselves with the mind of supreme intelligence so that we're in marriage on a mental level with the mind of supreme intelligence so that we get the best mental nourishment we could ever imagine and be free. And the, the best emotional nourishment you could ever imagine is in the zone of virtue. Or what happens when you are fed by the zone of virtue emotionally? Then you're free emotionally. Because you look at the problems people have with transitioning permanently into being nourished by prana, emotionally it's hard for them. Yes. Because yes. people get so much pleasure from physical food and so much pleasure from sharing physical food. Yes. So we are, to answer your question in a long way, we are in a time of bombardment of energy and we've gone from the, the, the journey is me, 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 me. It's all about me. 
to a flipping consciousness to we, 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 we. And when we're aware of our impact on the greater whole, we get grace because now we're operating in the game of the we. But now we're in the me, we game. And the me, we game is you need time out to nurture you to be immersed in the new frequencies that are coming in and fully integrate that. And then you can go back and be more active again where the being does the doing rather than the mind does the doing because you're immersed more deeply in the pure nature that you are and the, the energy coming in now is very much of the divine feminine call of the heart intuitive call and not the busyness of mental wisdom understanding and trying to understand everything mm -hmm. because the time we're in now is the more we try to understand the changes in the world on a mental level the more confusing it gets and we know this we've all been told it's a time of the heart it's a time of just stillness being still being silent listen to the voice of the heart follow the call of the heart so we need now to have the balance of the me we gain so to answer you, when you feel that you need some nurturing time, you take it. And I find so many women around the world are coming into, I need time in silence, stillness and self-care. And when I can self-care, self-nurture, give myself time in solitude, in silence and stillness, I'm recharging my batteries from a new paradigm and a new pattern of energy so I can operate more effectively in the game of the we. Long answer. Sorry about that. Well, it's like your question was there and we went way over here. Wow, beautiful. You know, being a mom now, that's always, a, I think, any parents or grandparents yeah. or healers who are serving their community who use their energies in that way you you have the best intention to share your love but that being oh. in the flow tapping into mm -hmm. that flow and also recognizing that we are a vessel for that new frequency to come onto the yes. planet yes right so that's part of what we had agreed to do by putting on mm -hmm. these physical bodies is to that is also a huge service that we mm -hmm. had agreed upon you know, and so also kind of lazy, you know, I, I need downtime to chill out. And actually that downtime, a lot happens during that downtime. It does. You recharge in a different way. And, you know, like people often talk to me about bilocation, the ability to be in two places at once, which we experience a lot more of in darkroom consciously. So we expand awareness and we're not trapped in the darkroom cave. But we do that every night when we lay the body down to sleep. Every night when we go to sleep, the spirit just goes into that expanded state as the body rests and we get regenerated and recharged and reformatted. And that's what silent stillness does. Like the amount of time people are now being called to walk a beach, go and sit on a mountaintop, go and sit in mother nature because you've got the electromagnetic frequency of the grounding reality that comes when you're in high chi fields or negative iron fields of mother nature and that's a quick reformat so a lot of people find just a 10 minute walk on the beach and it's like woohoo i'm recharged i'm ready to go but remember we are in this new time now and we've never been here before in my reality with the beings i work with we have entered into the sixth and final golden age on earth and we are moving deeper into unity consciousness in a way we've never done before and we are going into a global ascension program a planetary ascension program a personal ascension program a global ascension program Program and a universal ascension program and because the fields have not because we haven't done it before there's no construct there's no mental pattern in or formula it's a step-by-step -step weaving collectively as we go by just following the call of the heart and the call of the heart is how pure nature is communicating with us right now because the, men, the mental body just all it wants to do is analyze and we get confused we look at stuff and we go what the what just happened what a million people took to the streets to protest this and that then changed and this is changing because people are really being asked to choose how do you want to live in this world 
Do you want to live in a society that's operating for the good of all? Politically, educationally, economically, on health systems, on all level. What do you want now? This is your planet. And people are going, I am ready to live in a way where my presence brings out the best in everyone and everyone else's presence brings out the best in me. I want to know the secret to good family harmonics. Mm -hmm. How can I bring out the best in my children? How can I operate in my family with my husband so that he and I bring out the best in each other? How can we live in harmony in our own home? And then how can that happen in the community and how can it happen in the world? This is how I want to live now. I don't want to live in judgmental separatist realities anymore of, of the right and the wrong and this person's better and that one's not and all that stuff we've lived in because we've experienced enough of that. It's okay. It's just like, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Don't want to play that game anymore. Come on, I want to play a different game because your inner beingness is saying you can. There is more. There is a way that we can be together as an evolving species that is so enlightening and so awe-inspiring and filled with wonder where we're just like, yay, all the holy ones were right. Heaven is on earth. Buddha's pure land is here. We can live in harmony. We can live in peace. And we're all just finding the right formula for that. And the formula now is a little bit of me time, a little bit of we time, and follow the call of your heart. <laughs> Back to my previous question about breatharianism. Can you articulate for us why you don't love that term breatharian? Oh. Um, well, I think it's limited because one thing, if I was to go back in time now from when I hit the global stage in 94, I would make one statement. You ready? Yes, please. We eat all the time just differently. I eat 24-7. I eat all day, every day just differently. I'm being washed by this energy because I noticed over the last 26 years that I've been on the global stage with this, that people think we don't eat. They use the word breatharian, so all we're doing is breathing air. No, we're not. We're being washed, washed. This, this energy is flowing through the 99.9% .9 space of our atomic structure, this unexpressed DNA, this dark matter. We're being washed by this pure, pure essence frequency. We eat all the time, but differently. So I want the word with feeding in it. We are source fed. We are source fed. So I don't even use the word pranic people anymore because prana is the Indian term for the Christian God. So prana is like the God force, or in China, it's like the Tao. So it's like we have these different names. Well, they don't talk about feeding in the name. I want terminology that says, hey, we're fed. You can be fed through vegetarian food or vegan food or raw food or organic food or source food. I'm source fed. So right now, I'm writing a very simple, simple little handbook called Source Feeding Via Unity Science, Facts and Fine Tuning. Mm. So it's for people who accept it's a possibility, now let's just do it. Why are we doing it? What are we doing? How do we do it? And you know, what's the benefits? Well, the benefits, imagine the effect on global warming. Imagine if everybody could get 50% of all their nutritional needs direct from source and 50% from the external realm, from the external levels. What would happen to our environment? What would happen to our global resources? You know, wow, that's huge. So we're not even saying to people, stop eating altogether, just that you have an alternative source of nourishment that's in you, that's pulsating, waiting for you to tap into. You can make it strong and you can get 50% of your nutritional needs from that and 50% from the external world just for fun. And that in itself could have a huge impact on global warming, on climate change, on the environment. And then what effect does it have on the health? 
You know, we have over nearly a million people in America alone dying each year from medical misdiagnosis and misuse of pharmaceuticals. We have obesity rising all through the world, through America and Australia in particular, where two out of three people are obese that is costing trillions of dollars in the medical industry to treat obesity-related problems. We have 30% of the world dying of heart disease. We have another 30% of the world dying of cancer. We have 0.06 of the world dying, 0.06% from terrorist-related activities. But how much resource goes dealing with terrorism rather than the resources dealing with death through cancer, through obesity, through heart disease, which are all lifestyle-related? So if we can flip into a healthy lifestyle and eliminate all these unnecessary deaths through heart disease and cancer and obesity, wow, and source feeding does this. It's not going to go away. It does this. So I don't like the word breatharian because it implies we're not taking physical food. I don't like the word living on light because we're not living on light. We are being source fed. What are some other misperceptions or myths that you'd like our audience to know about? Because maybe they will uh, start doing a Google search and there's different yes. understandings out there on the internet because this is such a new, new way of being on the planet that, of course, there are some misunderstandings. So what are, are there a few other things you'd like to clear up since we have the blessing of actually chatting with you? Yeah, look, look, it's so interesting. The bringers of change get punched. You know, Copernicus was, it, Copernicus who said, guess what, we run around the sun, the sun doesn't run around us. And everybody thought he was a heretic and you watch it all burn you at the stake. And whenever anybody comes in and challenges an accepted status quo, you're going to get punched, you're going to get that biofeedback of no that's not possible you're a liar you're a, a fraud and you're a murderer and you do all the stuff you find about moi on the internet you know and that's okay I remember going through all of that persecution by the media which doesn't happen anymore because we have over 80,000 people expressing different methodology with their journey with this their experience although a lot are private but I was one of the ones that had to be public that was my pre-agreed involvement with this but I remember just the holy ones whispering to me when I was feeling overwhelmed this forgive them father they know not what they do was like this being just of light going, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. And it was like, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and then it was like, take a deep breath and go on, you know. And that's okay, that's normal. Everybody reacts when you tell them information that's just not part of their mental reality. And it's like, no, that's not true in my educational model, blah, blah, blah. But we're being challenged now to... A move out of the beta brainwave pattern into the alpha through meditation happens and then through the theta and then we understand so much more and we have Gaia TV I love Gaia TV thank you Gaia TV we have a beautiful phys a physicist called Teresa Bullard and she's just done a great um, series on Gaia TV talking about um, physics and the Kabbalah and how the Kabbalah connects in with physics and the ancient mystery schools and all the knowledge of the ancient mystery schools is now being understood by science. Then we have Randy with the quantum effect. Randy Weimanheim, I'm not sure of his last name. Then you have so many beautiful people on Gaia TV who are providing great education. You have our people talking about the power of intermittent fasting and how good it is on your body. You have Peter Straubringer who did the In the Beginning There Was Light movie that used this reality of being nourished by prana as an example of mind over matter and mind mastery. You and have by the yourself. Way you guys, we have a beautiful interview with Peter from a few months ago that I'd love for you guys to also enjoy. Oh, lovely, lovely. And you see, that's what I love. Because this is part of a divine matrix plan where we wake up and remember the divinity we are and that we are 
beautiful multi-dimensional beings then all these people have descended now to offer fields of specialty that i don't have to do i just have to focus on my field and then i can connect others to their fields to give the completeness of the picture so yes in the beginning of course it can be difficult but now it's not because people are having more and more profound experiences like nearly not nearly everyone but i would say 70 percent of people who come to our gatherings have met with Jesus on the inner plane yeah. or have met with Mother Mary or Ma Mary Magdalene or Isis or Hathor or Lakshmi or, or um, Kuan Yi is huge, Saint Germain, and all these beautiful ascended master mattresses and beings of beautiful light who don't have physical bodies anymore, but they're part of the matrix of creation and they're blending and weaving and connecting with the pure hearted ones to solidify and confirm our own intuitive knowledge and knowing and helping us to channel through these amazing books. You know, you said, how could I write 42 books? It's like, well, I don't write them. As soon as I start thinking, I stop writing. I just tune in and I could really, it's like, you know, it just, it's stuff that needs to come through. And I've just agreed to um, receive it and bring it through. But Einstein did the same and all the bringers of change, whether they were regular scientists or whatever, they all say it came from the field of imagination and then they brought it in and gave the mathematical or scientific formula for what they got in a visionary state. So I see a world of unity and harmony and people living in peace and operating at their highest potential and living in a realm of great creativity and incredible music and sharing and joy and art and bliss and it's an amazing world and it's not boring and I can see it. <laughs> in fact, it, 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 the people in this world and more and more stepping into it are just in a state of awe because every realm where you come deeper into unity, every zone where you experience more of unity, you realize the more that you know, the more you realize you know nothing at all because there's so much to be known, but you're just constantly in this state of awe and great. And, and gratitude. So our audience members, if they're still in this rich and beautiful conversation, are blown away by so much wisdom that you've been sharing. One really important question I have for you is that as our humanity, our consciousness on the planet shifts, a lot of people are receiving powerful, beautiful information, and then they have these surprising gifts of, let's say, not necessity of the food or different spontaneous healings and so on. And I love that the media tried to put you into this like guru persona mm -hmm. and you didn't buy into it. What resonates so much is that you awaken the master within everybody. Yeah. And that is like, there's like a profound respect that you have for your quote unquote students that you don't call yeah. students. In your retreats and workshops, I feel like I just pff, ignite into the best of myself. And I don't feel, even though you are obviously a key element of that in a retreat setting, I never feel like you want the credit for that. That you want to be seen as some kind of a guru that is like a, a teacher student relationship that is so unusual and on the other hand we're seeing breaking out in the news all the time yoga teachers meditation teachers and people that are kind of abusing their power abusing mm -hmm. that vulnerability and trust that their students give them can you give us some words of wisdom about those of us who are seekers who know there's so much more to explore in life? We feel it in our heart and soul. Like, how do we navigate those dynamics of um, surrendering to a teacher's path and not giving away our power? You know, there's a, just a lot of that happening in the news right now. And I'd love if you can share your, your advice about that. Thank you. <laughs> One of the things that we invite people is no matter what you're drawn to, come in your power. 
Don't walk in as if this person is greater than me or this person is more aware. They may be more aware in a certain field of study. So the word guru just means teacher. So when you go to university, you didn't give your power of your whole life away to the maths teacher or the physics teacher or whatever you studied at uni. You just went and gobbled up their expertise in mathematics because they'd been doing it longer than you. They had more training, they understood. But you didn't walk in in this state of, oh, my maths teacher will take over my whole life and, you know, I will you know, give all my devotion to my maths teacher. It's just a teacher. And that's the same with the word guru, meaning just to teach you. There are people who have expertise in fields that we can benefit from. I've had lifetimes in training in being nourished by chi in prana, and I did that. I had a life in this already in India. So if I've had lifetimes in training, and I've written seven books just on this subject alone, then you can gobble up that research quite quickly without living lifetimes and writing seven books. <laughs> and that's the whole idea of sharing research willingly. So I always say to people, come in your mastery, come in your power, because you are gifted as well. Every single one of us has descended to share a particular field of expertise or a particular gift. And there are none greater and none lesser some are a little more awake to the, the, the greatness that we all carry within and some are not quite there in the experience of it yet, but are beginning to understand there's more to themselves than what they've been led to believe with normal education. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we do use discernment and just come in a state of open receptivity and trust your gut instinct because everybody now is running by the languages of light. And I meet people who say to me all the time, yeah, I went and saw that person, but yeah, something didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is and I don't want to think about it, but yeah, not for me. And that is your inner gut instinct saying that person may not be quite gelling with your pattern of energy and you don't have to go into why. Oh, they're in their ego or they're not living their truth or fame has gone to their brain or, you know, you don't even have to analyse. Just trust your gut instinct. And if something doesn't feel right, don't participate. If it does feel right, then step in. But step in with discernment and just take what is flowing that feels right for you. Because I know people who have great things to say, but are they fully integrated and living what they're talking about on stage in their day-to-day -day life? Well, maybe not. See, it's important to understand, as the Holy One said to me, that there's four initiations we all go through in our spiritual journey. The first one may be the right use of sexual energy. As you get more and more charismatic and people go, oh, you're so beautiful and powerful, I just want, you know, and you see a lot of men in the world, they get caught up in the initiation of high charisma and they may be not using sexual energy as wisely as possible and then there's the fallout of that. So the first one is the right use of sexual energy. The next one is the right use of fame, the right use of money, and the right use of power. And when you look around the world, you can easily go, ah, oh, okay, that one's going through the fame game, that one's going through the money game, that one's going through the power game, that one's going through the sex game, as just games and initiations. But that's their business. What are you doing? Are you using sexual energy as wisely as you can? Are you using money energy as wisely as you can and for the greater good of all? Are you using fame energy as wisely as you can for the greater good of all or whatever? So all we can do is be answerable to ourselves and make the commitment to live in the highest level of integrity in every moment that we can. Like a prayer, teach me how to be the divine diplomat. Teach me how to fully embodiment, embody the highest teachings and the greatest wisdom and the greatest love that I can embody so that everything about my presence through all realms nourishes all realms and brings out the best in all. 
how can you play a guru game there? Because the guru game and the I am greater and you are lesser and I am the teacher and you are the student is a game of judgment and duality. And you can't transcend out of duality until you are in the consciousness to see the beauty of every individual and that everyone is unique and everyone carries their gifts and we are here to come together as family and friends. Wow. I prefer. So if I have the game, like, see, I can't look at a human being and go, you're less than. To me, every human being is an amazing divine representation of my own essence vibrating differently. So how could I judge that? How could I say, oh, but the way my essence is vibrating in my body is better than the way essence is vibrating in yours. Mm. <laughs> it's like, really? Really? That is so funny. So all the games of the guru games and the teacher games and the student games and I'm smarter and I'm better and America's better or Europe's better or China's greater or blah, blah, blah. They're just the games of human ego personality self, you know. And that's okay. That's just the games of the dual natured world. Just games. It's not truth. Wow, you have blown our hearts and minds wide open in this conversation and so many beautiful things you share that I think will just powerfully transform how we look at life after listening to this conversation. How can we get more of Jazz Mohin's wisdom and teachings? Your website and events that are coming up? Yeah, you know, you can go to jasmaheen.com and just get on our newsletter, but we only send out a newsletter about four times a year. I know a lot of people send out mailings every week or fortnight or whatever, but we don't. Um, we do it sporadically, but you can stay in contact there. We have our YouTube channel. You can subscribe there and we place a lot of our videos there. And we have the Facebook, of course, we're restricted with friends, how many friends we can have, but we have a few Facebook pages. But, you know, I like you to stay, I like people to go direct to infinite intelligence. It's like, why can't we just say to the universe, which is quantum benevolence, this powerful energy, just bring me everything I need to know when I need to know it plug me into the perfect networks, um, keep me aware of whatever it is that is for my highest good. And um, it happens, you know, like I might just open my email box and somebody sends me an email about a video that I really need to see. And I click on it and it's like, oh, that was so good. Thank you. And we have what I call the internet. And I love the internet, you know. You come into prayer and you just ask to be plugged into the perfect networks, whatever they are, but networks where you can operate in mutually beneficial relationships. Because when we're in mutually beneficial relationship, then that's the friend game. It's not the game of student teacher. You know, it's the game of, okay, I give a bit here, this one gives a bit there. I might teach this one meditation for free and he comes and mows my lawn every few weeks. Well, that's a mutually beneficial relationship. I give this one gives and we both benefit, you know, or I might go to my hairdresser and she, like I went into a shop the other day and this woman, a friend of mine was shopping and this woman there who's so sweet. She said, I'm sick of superficial conversation. <laughs> Everyone talks always about superficial conversation. I want real conversation. And in fact, I think I need to learn to meditate and every time I see you, you look really peaceful. Do you meditate? <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> and so while my friend was trying on clothes, I was and doing some great shopping, myself and this beautiful woman in the shop, I just gave her some good techniques for meditation. And then when I went back the other day, she said, God, that's good. It really works. I feel great. And I've started to meet some really interesting people where I can have great conversation. Well, that was a mutually beneficial arrangement. I could have great stimulating conversation with a woman in a shop while my friend tried on clothes. My friend got good clothes and this woman learned to meditate. How's that for triple win? You know, I like it. So we, I think people underestimate quantum benevolence. 
This is my greatest love affair in my life right now, is the benevolence that is woven through the quantum field. It is so wise and it is so loving and it is part of us and it's everywhere and it's listening to us. So have these conversations direct and you'll just find you'll be bought whatever you need before you even think you need it. That's the internet. To tie up this beautiful conversation, I don't really want it to end, but in the apparent world of time and space is my little boy's bedtime. <laughs> um, Thank you. Oh, what a delicious, nourishing conversation this has been. And you've had one of the most extraordinary lives I've ever heard or read about or crossed paths with after all these decades and also your conscious memory of so many powerful lifetimes. Mm -hmm. You know, our show is about the frontiers of human possibilities and you are absolutely such a powerful and beautiful and loving example of that new possibility that we all know and feel resonant with in our heart and soul. But if you were to just distill it down to one essence, one thing, one piece of advice, what is the single most important piece of advice you have for our audience for us to tap into our highest level of human possibilities in this lifetime? It's hard, isn't it? Because I know that nothing happens in people's lives until they're ready. You know, it's like the blossoming of a flower. You can fertilize the, the ground and then you get the little seed and you put it in and then you've got to very lovingly water it. But you can't stand there and say, grow, show me your flower, grow. It doesn't work like that. You've got to silently, lovingly attend to that. And we have this most amazing seed of magnificence in all of us that for some people is already blossoming. And some people, it's just, oh, they're nearly at full potential and they just need a little bit more love. And I think the greatest, and this is, is what the Holy Ones always share with me and I feel too, the greatest fertilization we have is our ability to love and to just love ourselves, to take time every day and just to say to the whole bio system, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you. You are a magnificent temple in which I, as a divine essence being, dwell. And I love you, and I love you, and I thank you, and I thank you. And I send out this prayer of thanks to this infinite intelligence. I love you, I love you, I love you. I am so blessed to be on planet Earth. And I send out this prayer and this feeling of pure love to all sentient life on this world and beyond. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And may this pure, pure love that comes from my essence beingness may fertilize you all in the right way in the right time when you're ready. And when you're a sensitive and you do that, you start to feel waves of love, biofeedback of pure love from all realms coming back to you. And now we're in mutually beneficial relationship with life. No words, no dogma, nothing difficult, just this transmission of these beautiful heartfelt waves of love through your own system and out through the world and through all realms. And then to see how creation responds to you on all levels because that is your dominant transmission is the most amazing journey. <laughs> and we have this in the meditation on iTunes, the I love you meditation, if you want. But you can also just do what we just shared. It's fun. You know, when we get a group of people gathered together and we all do the I love you meditation to ourselves, to each other, and to the world, everybody starts to melt because all this pure, pure essence love vibrates back and we're all like, ah. And in the love comes the wisdom. In the silence of the transmission of love comes the greatest wisdom. Wisdom without love is incomplete. Love without wisdom is incomplete. But when you get love and wisdom together, boy, do we know power.
Well, I had asked the question, how can we follow your work? How can we get more of Jasmuheen's wisdom, this, this loving essence that we're experiencing today? But what you showed us is the pathway back to our own inner wisdom, our yeah. own yeah. direct connection to that source of love. And there's just um, no words to describe how beautiful, how powerful, and how generous of a gift that is to all of us listening today. Because remember, the wisdom that comes to me comes because of my uniqueness. And the wisdom that will come to you will come because of your uniqueness. And you know what, like I used to say to people regarding the guru teacher game, because I had a guru for 20 years and I love him totally. And I still honor him. He taught me a lot. He taught me how to find the guru within, which was great. But I used to say, look, maybe I was born to be a yellow rose and my guru was born to be a yellow flower too. Well, we're going to hook up for a while. But in the final blossoming, what if he's a yellow sunflower? How can a yellow sunflower tell a yellow rose how to blossom? It can't. We're yellow flowers, but in the final blossoming, we have to go to the source of all wisdom within us that can guide us in the unique way we need to be guided. So if we sit in silent stillness and we go into the field of love just with the I am pure love mantra and drop into that, then every bit of wisdom and understanding that we need to have a truly successful life, which is a life where our presence is nourishing for all life, to me that's success, then that will come and the right pathway and the wisdom you need and the step-by-step -step guidance, it will come in the way you need it. Because that's benevolence. Because this benevolence, we are a child. We are ourselves in the body of divine benevolence, but not only that, we are the ocean itself. So we're not only a cellular vibration of a physical construct in this ocean, but we are the very ocean. When we go into the ocean, all is known, and then oh, it's wordless. It's just, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to be said. Thank you so, so much for this amazing conversation that I can't wait to go back through and edit and re listen and really absorb and and feel into all the nooks and crannies of what was shared here because this the transmission of love that you shared with us is just beyond description you know I, I know that every listener if you're still with us in this conversation I know that this is a profoundly life-changing conversation we just had and I'm so excited to see what kind of ripple effects it has in our own hearts, in our own lives, but also in our families, our communities, and in the larger work that we do in the world. You've really watered those seeds within us of goodness and, and love and help us tap back into that soul memory that sometimes the world makes us forget. And it's so delicious to hear these words to help us remember again. Thank you. Thank you Thank so, you, so Eva. much, Jasmuheen. And it's been, it's fun for me. And maybe we can come back and share some more at another time if your listeners want that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hi, friends. Did you love that interview? If you did, please leave a review and share with all your friends so that many more people can benefit from these game-changing insights. You can also go onto our website, dredithubuntu.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, where you'll receive free trainings and next-level ninja tools that we only share on our newsletter. Together, let's turn your life into a brilliant masterpiece.